Do we have you there? Yes. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We understand in reading some reports that things got pretty tense yesterday, and there may be some speculation that the president actually got up and walked out of the negotiation meeting. Is that what you're hearing as well? Give us your perspective. Well, yeah, that's what we heard. I mean, let's face it, you've got people that are surrounded by a lot of yes men that always tell them how great they are and agree with them, and now they're all sitting in a room with people who uh, don't get paid to say yes and, um, and play to their ego. So uh, I think uh, all of them across the board are sort of getting a, a lesson in humble pie that uh, there are some people in Washington who um, don't make their living kowtowing to the other, and that, that works both ways. Uh, Brian, tell me, how firm are the Republicans on not allowing any tax increases? Well, do you see cracks in the ranks there, or, you know, split in the ranks, or do you think the Republicans will hold firm on that demand? Well, first of all, remember, the real pressure is coming from the streets. You know, people forget that the American people saw this coming, you know, years ago. Uh, you remember this Tea Party group, their name was taxed enough already when they saw all this huge spending going on. The average citizen said, wait a minute, we, have, we know what's coming down the pike. We know that you're going to spend so much that you create a crisis and you justify raising our taxes. So I think that the, the real pressure on this thing is, is coming from people that said, you know, you guys in Washington really think we're so stupid that we haven't seen that when you were doubling your expenditure over the last couple of years that you weren't going to then come back and use it as an excuse to raise taxes. So that's really the tough part about trying to sell this. Now, if we're talking about things like eliminating the farm subsidy, the ethanol subsidies, if we're really talking about just of those carve-outs that's in the tax code, I think you can find people that will work on that. If you're talking about um, using this crisis of overspending as an excuse to start overtaxing again, I think you've got problems that go way beyond the Republican leadership on that. But I think we've, we've, we've seen something that we're – Maybe we can find an answer by saying, let's, let's not talk the taxes, let's talk about um, less of the, the cuts, and let's, let's throw in um, the, the constitutional amendment to force Washington to go to a balanced budget uh, in the future. And I think that may be able to be the, the compromise that we can work out um, and give us the time to be able to, to get something to avoid um, uh, the, uh, the issue of, of not having uh, the job done by, by August 2nd, which, let me tell you, everybody forgets. This could have been done last year. This could have been done. I understand why Pelosi didn't want to do it before the November election, what hurt her candidates. But after the November election, after she had already lost the majority, there was no reason – between November and January, that she couldn't have brought this up and voted on. Everybody knew it was coming. They knew it was being addressed. And and it was sort of like, well, let the other guys have to live with the political repercussions. And I think that that's a kind of a cynical politics that, that the public's kind of fed up with. And last minute yeah. always comes down to a crisis. Well, Congressman, let me ask you about this. Adding insult to injury here, Moody's, the credit rating agency, said now the U.S. credit rating will be under review. And how does that hurt the U.S. economy on a global level? I mean, this is having wider impacts as the negotiations are continuing to be stalled. Well, yeah, I mean, it could be that, um, look, the worst case scenario we get is that our rating gets changed and we get stuck with having to pay a higher interest. This is, and trying to get people across that this is not like cutting up your credit card when you vote against the debt, uh, raising the debt limit. This is like saying we're not going to make our mortgage payments. But if you do not restructure your debt, and get out of this 40% deficit spending. 40 cents on every dollar we're spending today is borrowed. It's not sustainable. If you don't figure out how to get out of that, you might as well address the fact that you're going to default eventually on your mortgage anyways because it's not sustainable. And if you're not willing to bite the bullet and actually talk about how you're going to eliminate that 40 cents on a dollar um, uh, debt deficit, you, you might as well admit to the world that you, you don't have the intestinal fortitude to do what it takes to pay your bills in the long run anyways. All right, Congressman Brian Bilbray, thank you. Uh, we'll continue to follow this. Uh, please uh, feel free to check back in with us uh, here in the next week or so as we get a little bit closer to that deadline, all right? Absolutely, and let's all pray that um, cooler heads prevail and we're, we're able to uh, not just avoid this crisis but finally address the real crisis that we've been ignoring for much too long. We'll keep right, our fingers sir. crossed. Thank, thank you, you sir. Much.